Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. This is a North West based courier company delivering all across the UK. They can assist in home moves and removals to large, heavy and bulky items, collections and drop-offs. Fast, safe and reliable deliveries. Please get in touch for a free quote. You'll find all the information within the description. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Billy Moore podcast and today's special guest is Liverpool born Leon Seaman. How are you Leon? Seasman. Seasman. Fucking hell. Who used to call me Spunky? Spunky. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you my mate? I'm alright you know, be just plodding on. Look after me mad and that now so. So tell us a little bit about what's, um, what you're here for because when you shared your story with me I was quite fascinated and I thought this needs to be told. All my life, like I grew up down Scotty Road in the 80s, uh, I was born in 1975. Uh, my dad was ex, ex Royal Green Jackets, that's why I've got his little badge on today, that's like a little. And uh, I wouldn't say, like, we had the best of what we could afford, like anyone back in them days. You know, my dad was strict though, I mean, like, if I did wrong, I got a belt, if, if I did right. It was just like a nod and all that, you know what I mean? But he was my hero, mate. I, could, mm. I mean, like, he was like Superman to me. He was he was just like, I loved him to death. But silly thing was, I never told my half I loved him till I was 18. Because I thought he'd think it was gay. Yeah. Because it just went on back then. You, you just didn't do it. I'm like, I don't know, I just used to eat a lot when I was a kid. I looked like... And chunk out the goonies who's at Roland's out of Grange Hill with Nashie for an haircut. I mean, like woolly jumpers on. I've got two beautiful little young sisters. It's like four years between each one of us, Nicola and Danielle. Uh, and as I say, I've got no brothers or nothing, no big uncles, no big families or nothing like that. Uh, so I, mean, I used to get bullied badly all the time. Fat guy, this fat guy, that you know, and it went not an ever, not an ever hate me. I mean, the words hate me and that, but the beans and that I used to get didn't, didn't bother me in the slightest and all that. that. But I used to always think to be growing up, walking past, and I used to think, why doesn't no one stop this? Why, why, I mean, please, someone help me. There. I'm saying that in my head, like, but no one ever did, and like. One day there was this kid, I'll never forget it, Ryan Ryan McKellen from Scotty. Like we grew up. We talk now, we see each other, ex army himself now. But he was about two years older and he uh, heard my little sister crying. And I used to run away from any physical altercations whatsoever. And she out hard to Benji. He was only a mongrel, but he'd run out barking and he uh, looked out the window and there's this Ryan McKellen just smacking into my sister. And I've just got this fire in my belly, and I've just thought, man, like, like they say, the incredible old. I've just gone, boom, I've ran through doors, ran down Blenheim Street, it was like between Roxy and Scotty. And I so I've ran down, and I've, I've spun this kid round, and I've just hit him with a right hand there. And I've never hit no one in my life, so I didn't know I put him a cape. But as he's at the railings, he's bounced back off me, and I'm thinking he's coming at me, I've gone crash. Crash and then I felt my eye grabbing hold of me. You now, when I used to run away from fights and that, my eye used to give me a clip around the ear, fucking fight them back. If you can't fight them and there's more of them, pick a stick up. So, when when I've seen my dad's hand raising, I've gone like that, and he went, You know what that means? That green light in me. <laughs> that green light in me to go around and thinking every time I spark someone. I'm going to get love off my dad. I'm going to get that little pat on the head and that. So every time you had a bit of conflict, you felt you'd need a bit of approval? Yeah, yeah. It's because, like, I had no mates, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like I, I seen on your one, you know, like when you were getting picked for sports. The only thing, I never even got picked for the goal post. I got picked to, to be put in the goal because it was a little fat fucker. That was it. And, like, I don't really like 
if I'm honest, I don't really like people. I like animals. Like, but you meet a good few people in your life that, yeah. that like, you hut should all the year to you. I mean, I can count on one hand how many friends I've got. I don't even need all my hand, if I'm totally honest. But, eh, uh, my family's just, like, we lost me, uh, lost me dad 19 weeks before I got out of jail. And, eh, uh, that's when I knew we I weren't invincible. I weren't Iron Man or whatever. I, I, I knew then. But it's just mad because I couldn't give a shit about time. I'll be straight with you now for time tomorrow. I wouldn't be asked. But you know, the thought that anyone who loves time terrifies me more than anything in this world. And I mean, like, I, I probably fret a bit too much over me, mum. But I always say, when the day my dad passed, was the day it, the glue fell away on our family. So what, uh, what took you to jail? Because we, this yeah. is the story we were talking about prior yeah. to getting well, you on. When I left Scotty, as I say, it started fighting and that, then I started getting a bit of attention for fighting and that. And I uh, moved up to Miranda Road, uh, by Mickey Bennett and all that. They lived on the bottom of Stanley. And uh, going on, like you do in the park with your mates and all that. And there's a rockery in Kings Park. And uh, I've gone in there for, to relieve myself to have a piss. And uh, as I walked around the corner, there's some fella. And I, to be honest, the first thing is, I thought he was with a bed. Because he's got his pants and he's down by his ankles. So as I've forgotten. Oh, How I, old was you at this time? Um? Fifteen, fifteen, searching fifteen, yeah. yeah. So as I was walking around the bushes, where the bushes are dipped, there's no bed there. He's looking right at us. Now we're all playing tops and vests and your skins. So I've gone, hey, I've ran after him. Now I ain't catching no one, I just about catch a cold. Chased him, he's burnt us off. And then that night I've gone to this bed to, I can't even remember the girl's name, to be honest. You know, it was by Liver Wines, by the way, the Bennett used to have Liver Wines, so it was facing the shaky round them bigs. Comes, coming down in the morning. Here's this mush putting his milk bottles out. Now he lives in a flat underneath this girl. He's got four kids, by the way. So I've gone, you're all right, mate. And he went, you're all right. As in clues on, it's me. So I've, I've gone out. How no, old is this fella? He must have been in his 30s. Yeah. 30s. I, I'm, I'm just having a wild guess there, but I'd say about 30s. Late 20s, early 30s. Uh, so I've gone out. Now there was no communal door or nothing on the door. So I've thought, I've gone and got my cousin, I've got one of my mates, and I've gone, come on, we're ending this much. You know, this is the one that was fucking nonsense off us, and that we're going to do. Yeah, 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 come on. So I don't know why we've got there. Mate, within half a few hours, a lock's been put on this door. So I'm trying to get in, not can't get in, so I shouted, started shouting my sister's name, like I was looking for a girl. This mush has come to the window and gone, what? And I went, get my sister out now. And he's gone, there's no girls in here. And I went, I don't believe you, get my sister out, she's in there. And he went, what's your name? Now, I'd been watching the craze the night before. <sighs> and all that. And I went, Reggie. Not of it, my mate's that side and my cousin's that side. So he's gone, lad, I'll let you in. But, like, there's no girl here. I went, sweet lad, if she's not there, I'm sorry and all that. As soon as he's opened the door, I've just put my sword out from behind my back and just, it's had like a metal thing, you know, like a duster thing over it. Mm. Cracked him as he's spun, we just grabbed him, tied him up. Well, like, just put his, had his hands behind his back, walked up the stairs in the flat, locked the door, got our way now, took him in the living room, blindfolded him, fucking wrapped his legs up, wrapped his arms up. And then, like, I just turned him over, and as I've gone to stick my blade round the back of his neck, my mates go, no, and drag me off him. Not sober, I'm not sober, and I've gone, well, fucking get out the room. And all that, so I don't know why the plasmas were just coming out and all that, then. It was still a fucking big, big mad thing, though. I've gone, get the celly, while I beat him then. So he's gone out, and I've just stood on me, and I've just hacked and hacked at his fucking hands. And that the first one was come off the right two or three acts, but it's just squirting and everywhere now. His hands is being yeah. you've chopped his hands it, off. Yeah. Just just by his wrist. And yeah. you're fifteen years old and you're chopping these kids' hands off. Imagine it. Looks alright on the telly. It looks a lot easier than what if what it is to be honest, eh? 
Oh, I don't even know why, mate. It's just like, I wanted to sort of it. I wanted to drop them because I've seen what these people get in court. These, and these 13, pedophiles. Yeah, 13 months, mate, and then they're out. Who, how long does it take for this kid to get the life back? They never get it back, mate, never. Like, it was in Tyson Army. Like, a lot of people were messed about with there, but a lot jumped on the bandwagon. But I knew this fella was a wrong one. I knew for a million percent in my heart this fella's a wrong and I've seen him doing that. Now, I don't give a fuck what anyone says, whether you're, not, you're types to go and have a wank in public and get collars or whatever, that's your thing. When you're staring directly at kids, that's not... I mean, there was no birds there. There was young lads. So that, that's all that's going through my head. And I, so, so the clad is coming out everywhere and my mates come running around. Just two hands on the floor now. He shot both of them off. Yeah, and I thought he's going. He's going. We're going to get lights off. And so I'm, he's worrying me now. This so, so we've sort of done like a torn. What we thought were a torn okay, or whatever. Yes, he's, he's fucking got it. Got it. Got his arm up. Held it up and, and they put it around to get a something. To be honest, mate, it was my cousin who done the torn. Because I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing. Now. But as he's doing that, I'm throwing these in the bin bag. With the hands? Yeah. You threw the hands in the bin bag? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah it's because of thought. You know, look, look, it's that night. It's, well, what time was it about? Yeah, it was about that night now. Anyway, because, like, it was a few hours while I've been gone to get it, the right people who were needed. To be honest, though, I should have picked better. But it is what it is. So we're going around. We get off out the back of the flats. And we come on to Stanley Road and the bank hall train station's over the road. Now, you used to be able to go down the stairs of bank hall and then onto the track, cut across it to Sandvilles or up onto Melrose Road, and you had to go up a little sly embankment. So we're going across there, and, and this one of my mates is going, You're sticking down. You're st-. He hasn't seen me put the hands in the back. <laughs> You're sticking down what's in the back when you don't want to know. You're watching that, yeah. I've got any hair. He's put his hand in the back, he's come out with the hand, and he's just dropped. And we're on the rail lines now, and I've had to like sort of control the ball, but where he's at, uh, when he's woke up, he's going sick and all that. I'm keeping it, oh, whatever. Sick, sick, you know. So we got off. Me and him's in so for a while after that, but uh, it turns out he's the one who's turned me in, basically. Because when I got arrested, he was with me. Now, me and you've done something. You're getting pulled in with me. Or you're getting asked your name, at least not told by hand response, fuck off. So where did these hands, where did they go? <sighs> yeah, well, I can't really get, I can't be charged with them now. It's on a bed, isn't it? So, you know, the lamp he's off. There's a tunnel down there and to get the end of the kennel. Through there. So you took the took his hands off, threw them in a yeah. the bin bag, or threw them in the river. I always remembered about putting holes in the prick, prick the bin bag with stones in, put another bin bag around. That way it'll sink down. To How the come you threw them away? I didn't want to keep them. I used to, <laughs> you know what? I mean, funny enough, as you say that, I used to collect bits of ears when I used to fight. Yeah. And I, I, I blame South London for that. You know, the air, the air was Universal Soldier. Yeah. And I don't know. I always went to the extreme because, like. I don't know, stupid. Who's the collector he is? Bits of them and that. I only yeah. needed a bit of cheek and a bit of nose and he has a face, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's been like Mr. Potato Web, but after that, my reputation sort of went through the roof and I started going to town. Now, I know it sounds silly, but I never give him a second thought because I thought, well, if he's a nonce, they're going to know he's a nonce. Little, I didn't know he, he might never have been next or caught before but you sort of took it upon yourself to yeah yeah because I was seeing what they were getting in courts anyway they were getting 10 months and then I thought ah fuck fuck, mate I'll be honest with you mate I was brought up to chop nonsense up Mm. if they give you the job for torture and nonsense I'd be like David Beckham for torture and nonsense and I, and I would and I'd feel no remorse whatsoever for them let me wrong I've you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not proud to say this, but I'm not ashamed to say it at the same time. Like, I was, I was proud to do that that day, but, but I wouldn't say if it was an ordinary person, if you know what I mean. If it was like, just us two having a fight in the club and that. 
It's a bit drastic. You just felt you needed to shave up your own bit of justice. Yeah, because I thought he'll get out after 10 months or whatever. If it's like, when, when were we ever brought up to go and phone the police? If I phone the police, I'd probably end up in a canal with his hands. So the way I looked at it was, I'm doing justice for the community here. You know what I mean? Someone needs to do something to these people. And what happened when you got arrested? Yeah, I think I got arrested for a long time. You know, I was on, the ro- I was on my toes for a while. Uh, my house store was going in every other day. Uh, but in the meantime, I was doing robberies and I was doing bits on the door. And I was, I was, like firms are dying me if someone holds out to them. And, you know, I always got the door back. And I, one fella used to always say to me, you're one of the best telephone gangsters I've ever heard of me. Like, because I'd be going, yeah. You get down here, you know what, I'll be chopping your fucking nana's fingers off. And it's just used to work. And, but I loved it. If I went into somewhere and my back was against the wall, it was a buzz. It was a, it was a... So you got a buzz. kick out of the extreme. Yeah. And like, all them people had caused damage to me over the years and that. They did it so easily, you know. It didn't look like they ever gave a toss. So I had that sort of mentality about me, like how I been asked, mate. You know, these were bad people I was dealing with. I never earned what I'd call an ordinary job. You know what I mean? As if you were, if you had me coming through your door, I was there for a reason, mm. and you probably knew what that reason was, rather because if you got involved in the game, it's that old saying: you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I fully took that on board, mate. And I was prepared to die by the shot. And I, like, I've been stabbed, I've been shot. Like, I got, I got shot with what I think was the worst thing ever, salt pellets. In the arse of a shotgun, my arse looked like it had acne for about 20 years, mate. And, uh, well, when I first, I got stabbed again yeah, on Sandhill Strange Station uh, for stopping a kid getting bullied, funny enough. Two big, greasy, smelly heads. Long greasy hair just slapping this little fuck here. And I just seen me, mate. Just seen me. And I've gone over and I've only tapped him on the shoulder. And he's turned around and I've just felt boom. And I've gone, what are you doing? And then he's he's like that looking at me. And I've looked down, I've got a, an handle of a lock, lock knife sticking on my chest. And I'm like, I don't know all that. You keep it pressed, you keep it in, or whatever. I've just yanked it out and started plunging him in the legs. And he. Next thing, the scream and there's all everywhere. There's kids stepping, there's pools of blood, blood are coming. I bail strong. I didn't think, and I thought I was stabbing me, but I thought that's how they were feeling, just getting a punch. But I've never had no crimes around using it. Means if, it, if it's in, if it's deserved, and it was earned, this is my mentality years ago. Mm. Yeah, well, fair enough. You know what you're getting into. So don't don't be moaning. I never went moaning to coppers if I got some. I got stabbed, I've been stabbed numerous times, bottles, ran over, you know, I've had my top rack smashed out with a Land Rover, do you know what I mean? And mate, I was getting shot on an Orwell Road when I was 15, 16, 15, off a kid who looked like the Milky Bar kid. And before I knew I was getting shot on, two bullets had gone past me, uh, boom, boom. And then I was all and I'll be honest with you, I was Charlie's off my search. And I thought, I've remembered zigzag for some reason, but I thought, the rationalisation under the drugs age that I was under was, I'm not zigzagging running away from him, because how am I going to know he's zagging? Mm. So I ran at him, lucky enough, this kid only had one bullet left in that gun and I let it go, but he just stayed there, just pulling. So by the time I got to him, I just smashed his face in. Again, reputation through the roof. Everywhere I went, people wanted to buy drinks for me, like, my mate used to call me Moses, because he'd go, do you want a bevy? And I'd just march towards the dance floor, and everyone would just go, Shh. And it's just... So do you think you had, like, an intimidating presence? Oh, very much, yeah. When you were in your youth? Yeah. I had to walk the match as well. I've got my dad's walk, mate. It looks like I'm carrying two tellies under my arms. But, yeah, I, I'd always walk. Like, I wear glasses now. Yeah. So when I haven't got them on, I look like I'm standing. I've had people walking down the street and I'm like that, like that, and they're going, lad, what the f- what have I done? And I've gone, what are you on about? 
Laten zien, niet een beetje op je snel. Laat me laat weer. Staan wel. Had ze niet even zien, je meet. Ik heb een ding in jouw commentary met de hond. Ja, ik was even wat special, ik denk. Ik ga me goed believen in body language en all that en reading situations. Now. I wish I would have been a lot, lot, lot sooner when I was younger. But my, my, I always watch someone and weigh them up first. And that's why I don't like going to clubs or pubs. I don't, I don't really drink no more. Got to be with a bed or with one of the lads or someone I trust and I feel safe. And that's not an asshole that starts crying every time they're rotting about exes. So what happened to um, How long did it take before you got arrested? It was about a year. About a year, 18 months or something. Got nicked off a sponsor on a fountain's road. And I never seen a day like that. I went away from the end of 92. I was on remand in Hinley. A first night in Hinley. Listen, I hear all all these people on on the podcast and all that, like jails, it's yo, jails. Listen, let me tell you something. I can handle myself, yeah. Jail's not a fucking joke. Jail's one of the scariest bastard places you will ever be put in your life. If you can't fight, you haven't got that little snap, that little bit of wit about you, and that. It's a, you know. You can't say you're not going to make it. You've got to, jails are fine balance. And my first night in Hinley, I seen someone swinging in the cell across from me on the other wing. And he was there that long, mate. He had bands on his feet. You, know, you, you know, the pipes in Italy were like in warm in the summer, off in the winter. This kid had bands on his legs. He was hanging there that long, mate. They were supposed to check on us every half hour, every hour or something. Nah, so that, that was my introduction into jail. And mate, I was only man for about six, eight months, something like that. He, Went to the, through the magistrates and all that. First appearance at the magistrates. This is too, uh, too different for us. We need too severe yeah. to, to deal with. Yeah, it? he's got. You're definitely, definitely getting a custodial sentence there, and it's going to be a very high one. Uh, I was just like I'd never, never really been in trouble. I know that sounds stupid, but only bits and bobs, you know, like assault on a police officer or something like that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get about 12 months. That's what I thought. Uh, I was nicked. They tried to get us at first. What was it? They tried to charge charge me for attempted at murder at first. Yeah. Or section 18 in militia union. But the thing was, the lad who grasped me up, he wouldn't stand up in the door against me because he knew he probably incriminated himself or whatever. Or then, he, everyone's gonna know he's a grass. And he. Uh, so, but the lucky thing was, when we blindfolded him when we went in, he doesn't know who's chopped his hands. He's just saying that he knows it was us because, like, he'd seen us before we pulled the ballet on. Not the ballet, fucking pillowcase or something stupid, a tape. He uh, dragged him upstairs. So, I've gone like that. The way going, who, who, who was it that's on it with you? And I'm going, oh, it was Ronnie Craig. He's going, what? what? And I went, yeah, I'm ready. He was me, Ronnie and Charlie. And all that. And the busy is just acting a goat. So, when it's come, when it's come up, I've, got, I've had Lynch kill as me brief at the time. And I've gone, what am I looking at for this? And he went, do you want the truth? I went, yeah. He went, 10 to 15. And I went, what months? And he went, no, years. I've gone, but he was a nonce. He went, can you prove he's a nonce? I went, well, not really, no. What do you mean, previous and ones? Well, have you got photos of them? Have you got evidence to support your allegation? Yeah, I yeah. had not made that. I didn't know about all that shit. He was clocking us. That was my proof. But little did I know that when you go to court and that, when I said that, they're going to say, well, you're just using that as an excuse to uh, justify chopping this man's hands off. Because it, it ended up getting trotted, uh, aggravated burglary with a short maliciously wounding with intent or something like that and in the end I got, I got something like I got six years for it and I, like there were 11 robberies and all that they all got five year concurrence 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 everything yeah so like when when the judge is reading my sentence out now i've been told sense of 15 now i don't know whether 
back then, now I know that they say the way, so anything under, mm. they've done a brilliant job. But that was my first time properly in court, and that, you know what I mean? So, like, when they give me the six years, I'm buzzing me. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, yeah, yeah results. results. Me mask going, oh, he's going to be great when he gets out. Because, like, she's adding all the concurrence up and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. She thinks I've got to whack all them at the same time. And I'm going, no, nah, it's chance, it's chance. And you know what was weird? weird? <laughs> I used to check me head yeah, when I was a kid. You know, six, 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 these fucking things. I got six years on a sixth day of the six month. <laughs> And she'd be going, oh, I knew it. And like, I'd done one out of that now. I'd done something like four and a half, five years out of that. And you know what, mate? It lulled me into the full sense of security. Because even screws needed me all right on that sentence. I mean, like, I used to get screws that used to open me up to go and smash nonsense. And uh, I went to some of the most horrendous YPs in this country's got to offer. I mean, Aylesbury. Castlington, Brinsford. Brinsford, I actually had a Rambo knife pulled on me on the f- on footy pitch. A proper one as well. I'm thinking, what, oh, two brush and a razor? Nah, I mean, they had it. They were, they were just, it was, it was a different, it was a different kind of shock. That's the first time in my life I've ever been proper scared. I mean, because, like, you're alone, aren't you? You know. You can have the biggest frames outside, you can have as much stuff as you want, but when you're in there, you're on your own, you're just the same as every other bear bum in the shower. Yeah. And, and like, inside, that's terrified me, terrified. And, like, it didn't, it didn't get any better. <laughs> it didn't. It, it was ruthless, mate. It was... I went to the... the I was the 13th inmate in Lancaster Farms, when I don't, there was about 50 of us went on the bus. And like we got stifling and everything in the night, and it lulled me. And I was thinking, well, outside chef cooking for us, and all. <laughs> this is the rich, this will smash this. And then he sent me to Castlington from there uh, after the pork and my bears and Michelle. He's done this thing where he talks a lot about hanging himself. So you've been on, I got him stones. I told him, you're doing a long time, your bears getting porked anyway, you might as well swear it. And he, he was laughing at the end of it. And he, the governor wanted to do this thing. The governor at the time, something if you remember, was Governor Wapplington. Yeah, yeah. And everyone, we used to call him Whopper. What's your name, Whopper? And he's come up to me and he's gone, what you did for that lad last night? Anything I can do and all that. He says, as a matter of fact, we've got this thing starting where we're going to let your family, just your immediate family, come in, see down the jail and see how you live, how we treat you. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I got me bears in me. Oh, me sent me ma downstairs with the kid, me, me, me sister. So that's cut the other one because my dad was divorced. Me, by the time they got downstairs, I was on the nest already. And uh, yeah, and I've got, I soon got launched out of there. They sent me to Castlington. Screws nearly killed me there. They hated scousers up that end, me, to the northeast. I mean, like, if I have family in Belgium, it was quicker for them to visit me. Yeah. Then it was from Liverpool because of Overcraft or something. And it was on a RAF base. So every every fucking morning, jet planes are f- flying in past you, shaking when it snows. Goes past the one's window. And the screws nearly killed me because they make me, the girl I was with at the time, I can't even remember, uh, Leanne, Leanne or something, and he was uh, here and my man have come out to visit me. Now, male screws are not supposed to make females take the tops off and that. And he made my man and my uh, girl take the top off down to the bra. So when I've been told this, obviously, I'm like 16, 17 stone now. So I've grabbed the chair and I've got to screw against the wall. Worst mistake I made. Block was about a 20 minute walk from the visiting castings and I got smashed the life out of all the way there. And as you know, when screws be here, uh, the dog ones really ain't no way to hurt you. I've been hitting the bollocks over and over with truncheons, mate. And you know what saved me? Like, I'm not a god man, me. Like, I believe, like, yeah, we'll probably meet up with our loved ones or something. But there ain't no one god, mate. Because why would a god put nonsense on this earth or all that? And, like, the, the final straw in my little niece passing away, who we were going to call Nevea, which is heaven backwards. 
Ah ne. Spirit so hot is on it. The call was wrapped round the neck three times. Now I'm an ordinary John me. We got the three D scans in there. Now how you miss a cord around the baby's throat throw three times, I don't know. But every time I'd say say, that's my little niece, he, she starts having contractions, he, the baby's heart rate drops. I'm an ordinary lamb, me and me said, I'd say if that happens again, I'm not saying that if it happens, she's section. Nah. And the admitted, it was the hospital's fault, the admitted liability. And we had to sign statements saying that, and then they've changed the statements. But what, the really what freaked me out is the baby's lips just blue. Yeah. And he, uh, when I've, uh, when, listen, Taylor, Taylor's my little princess, like I've got little nieces and nephews and that. But she helped me through a breakdown. I mean, this is why, how I ended up on drugs and shit. Uh, this kid sat there every day. And used to go, really? <laughs> Me and she wants a Jurassic Park. And she dragged my lip to a quilt. I know I've gone a bit off the story here. Mm. And it's downstairs. And I'd just be sat there, shoving and shoving and shoving and shoving. And she'd just turn around and go, Lily, I love you. Yeah. I'd just snap me out of it, you know, mate. Yeah. But like then, when I, when I got sent down, I broke a song and she was, in uh, 98, got 12 months for it. You've been released from Cassington? No, no, I got released from Gart off that. Yes, yeah, sorry, I went a bit off track. You'll have to, I've got scouts to let's build, honest <laughs> to God. So you went from, no, it's okay, so you went from, um, you went from, you know, Cassington to Gart, finished off in the cons? Yeah, I loved it in Gart. I, I, like, I know people say you love jail, you should never love jail. Jail's for monks, and they in jail's too long. But I mean, from white peas to, to the adults, so it's a yeah. different kettle of fish. I didn't have to be no one in guard. Mm. I could just be myself, because they were bigger, airier ass men than me. I mean, I was with my young Michael and Tony, Joe Morley, you know, the Bennett's, the big Mickey's lads. And like, they always had respect for me, because I'd always stuck up for my family and, and shit like that. So when I went to there, that was an eye on my guard. But, yeah, I got released from Gart. Yeah, that was in 1997. And I was out for five years, but I tried getting a job on that, mate. And, like, this country, mate, they like, they don't like... Have you noticed when I start, they like to pick you up, yeah, put you on a pedestal and then knock you the fuck down. Like, where the States, the States like to put their stars on a pedestal. And they used to like to keep them there. But, like, I, I, like, listen, if I've ever been nicked for stuff, right, if I've done it, I'll throw my hands in, because my dad brought me up, listen. Well, you'll throw some man's hands in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something. But uh, my dad used to always say, exam, he used to say, listen, lad, you do the crime, you do the time, you don't moan, you don't bitch, you take it on the chin, because you carry my name. <laughs> and I never got on that until I was older. But he was right. So if I haven't done it, mate, I'll fight to, like, to the nail to clean my name. But if he have done it, I'll throw my hands in. And I, I think the police sort of expected that with me. Like, don't get me wrong, I never got no favours off them. I got plenty of items as well. And like, but someone's got to do that job, you know what I mean? I mean, look look at the day. Look, these kids. They've just arrested someone for that nine-year-old, say, uh, that, that poor little girl I got shot the other day. And like, you know, the scumbags who do shit like that, mate. The scumbags, you know. Like I said to you, if I was chasing someone back in the day, now, whatever, they run in the chem belt, chase over. I don't know if they're running into where there's women, kids. These days, they all think they're on Grand Theft Auto, mate. And I say to everyone, you know, listen, I'm anti-gun, I'm anti-knife and all that, right? I don't shout about it and all that. If a kid talks to me, and I'll give them my views and all that, but I won't shove it down no one's throat or nothing like that. Or listen, a gun and a knife are fucking useless until some dickhead picks it up. Do you know what I mean? A gun can't get up and fire itself. A knife can't get up and stab itself. It takes an idiot to pick it up. And like, they don't know the damage that they're doing. And I'm not on about to the victims or them. I'm on about to themselves mm. and their family. Because, you know, my ma, listen, my, my ma is a scouser. She's run every booze and known to my own <laughs> Scotty. My ma's more well known than me and all that. And uh, 
Sorry, what was I going to say about my ma? Yeah, my ma's a scouser. She went everywhere over this country. Never moaned once, you know me. Not once moaned. Even my dad, when I got nicked with guns, my dad stopped talking to me for 18 months. Yeah. And I didn't know he's best mate to be shot in the head in the army. So, understandably. But, eh. Uh, Mate, I, I had no way of putting food on the table for my family. I mean, I got out, I used to be able to go up and down the docks and boring jobs and that, you remember? And you go in and train, you know what I mean? Go on, just do a few lap poses and all that, and you get a job. Now, now all terrorism and that, if you get gated off, if you haven't got an appointment. And let's have a right, when I go for an interview and they ask me for a CRB, I, I put myself in their, 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 their position. If I was hiding someone in the room and it says, yeah, he's chopped someone's hands off. Last thing first, how can you imagine that conversation? I'm not fucking telling them he's sacked. He cut someone's hands off. He can have my fucking job. So they don't give you it. But you know what, mate? I've got to say something. There's one person that's given me a chance since I've come out, right? And like, I, 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 I spoke to them. I spoke to all my family, told them what I'd be talking about. And yeah. Said it may be hard. You know, it's hard for me. So God knows what it must be like for them, because they've had to live this, mate. I, I've like, half the time I've been numb, <laughs> so I haven't felt half of it. And I don't care what people think of me. Anyway, I, I used to, I used to want people to like me and all that. And I don't give two fucks no more, mate. Let them say it to me face. They won't say it to me face, so it's good. That's good enough for me. Mm. But like my family and that, my ma's always been a scouser. And he, she never ever moaned. So when, when my dad went, I had two choices. I can either carry on being an arsehole, right? And going back to jail time after time after time. Or I can stand up and be a man. Now, I'll never be after my, my dad was right. But I'll never stop striving to be that man. Do you know what I mean? I'll never stop. And like, so you, you believe that like you got to a point in your life where you you realised that, that like enough was enough and I'll be honest, it was my dad's sign. And and it's stupid. I have to learn things the hard way, me, Bill. I'm not normal. I don't want to be normal. Do you know what I mean? When people say to me, You're fucked in the head. Well how do I know I'm not normal and all you are fucked in the head. <laughs> Good way of putting it. Do you know it. what I mean, mate? And I'm just what you see is what you get. There's no way there's no uh, grey areas, you know, There's if you no don't like what I'm saying, bounce. As I say, I, I call it Scouse Tourette's. I think I've earned the right to say, within respectful ways, what I want. I think I've earned the right. I've done a, a, a good service for this country by chopping that nonsense up. Maybe it was the wrong way to go around it, maybe, but maybe if I was brought up in Epping, or if I was brought up in McGull, maybe I might have took him to the police station. Maybe he'd have got 10 months and got out. Maybe. Would have, would have, would have, should have got it. It doesn't matter, does it? It's done. So do you but think your life from that point onwards, like... It was destroyed. It was destroyed. So that decision... I'd you do it again. You I'm made... Happy. Like, I'm like chopping like this man's hands off. Right, putting him in a bin bag. Right, dumping him in the River Mersey. And you do it again. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Okay, so do you believe that destroyed your... Yeah, but why I'm saying that is my life's already... I've had, like, I'm 47 now. Now, if you'd ask any, anyone that knows me years ago, was that I ain't made the past 21, does it all said, no, I'm probably bet you all kinds. But I'm here, I'm still here. Now, like, I'd, my advice to any young man or young lad at that age who come across the same thing, I say this and I feel no crimes about it, taking the plot job. Because that's their job. The judges are there because that's their job. The jailers are there because that's their job. They've got to do it. Without us, they wouldn't have a job. Someone's got to do it, mate. Someone has to do armed robbery. Someone has to sell guns. Someone's got to do it, mate. But that government don't give any credit to the youth. Some of the youth out there, mate, have got so much going for them that we never had. I mean, like, fucking PlayStations and all. Fucking hell, mate, I never had a fucking... I had a yo, not even a yo-yo, I just had a yo, mate, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, like, did you... 
Do you think it's? You think? Do you think like? Because you, know, you mentioned you were in, you know, you were you were under the the influence of drugs as well for quite some time. Yeah. Do you think that played a massive part in in your thinking in the way your mental well being went? No. No, my mental well being went when I was stabbing someone one day and I seen the look in his mother's eyes, and I thought weird. Is that what my man must look like when I get stabbed? That's my baby. So what's happened there? Got a conscience. <laughs> biggest thing that happened to me, biggest thing that fucked me career up as a criminal. But the best thing at the same time is was give me a conscience. He may have been a little rat or whatever. You know what I mean? A burglar or fucking stuff like that. But like, I mean... That thing, it's... It's someone's son, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, they haven't done it, that's what I mean, like... When you when when we commit acts and that, all right, listen. Would the people get the consequences? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm all right, I can handle the jail and that, but if my man has to go in jail for me, then be a different story. Be a different story, mate. But like I've had so much like happened to me in a space of time in my life. Like I mean, I've had five years out between ninety two and two thousand fourteen. That's a hell of a long time. It's half of my life. But I've had so much chance to me in the same point. I mean, like, you know, I was on the doors when I was a kid, and, you know, like, I've run a gym. I've run the powerhouse on Scotty for me, mate, Ian Fitz. Yeah. But, like, it's so funny to think, like, you know, when you go on drugs and that, I used to think, smackheads this, smackheads that, you know, crackhead this, crackhead that. Everyone's got a crutch, mate. Every, and, you know, I wear so many masks, me, all the time. Masks, I wear my humour mask, I wear my front mask. I, you know, I've learned to deal, like, if I train now, like, I've been clean for years now, right? Like, don't get me wrong, I smoke weed. If I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm like Australia to everyone else. No one will get away with it. Mm. And, like, it slows me right down. It's the only thing that works for me, that and training. And, like, as I say, start, when I got out, in 2014, my little cousin, eh, Thomas, passed away of bowel cancer. He was only 30, mate. I mean, five days I seen this kid go from an healthy young kid to, like, you know that picture? Yeah. So that, mate. This kid had never hurt no one, you know, mate. Never hurt no one. I mean, he did whatever he did. But he weren't like me. He weren't like me. He was, he was, he was a lovely little kid. You know what I mean? And like, I was there, when I went to see him just before he passed away. I was with him, yeah, I went in, and I was going, lad, what the f... Give it to me. I'll take it, lad, give it to me. You've got your... I couldn't even kiss him, mate, on his fuck, because I thought I'd break him. Mm. And like, I walked out of his house that day, and I, I walked around Wally Hall Park, torrential rain, shorts and a vest, just sobbing, just sobbing. Like I said, I don't believe in no God, mate, right? I just think it's funny, his name's spelled backwards as dog. Mm. And the devil's lived. Just, it's just my thoughts, but I'm walking back across the field one night. And I looked up and I don't know whether it's because I was crying or whatever. I seen our lady's face in the moon, night, <laughs> And I stopped about three people, right? One was a woman and she looked at me like I was Jack's Pizza Sutcliffe or something. Mm. And I went, no, listen. And, and I don't know, yeah, so I made the point that raising money for cancer, yeah, to make a wish. Yeah. Foundation, is it? Yeah, 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 so I went to the witness, I was fighting kids, like 20 years younger than me. And like, I thought, I've always tried to knock people out. I thought, you know what, it's only three, two minute rounds. I'll just try and box. And like the first time I boxed, I, I stopped him in a second. Yeah, I think I sent you the, yeah. the, the, the old way. Like, I'm not by no means a boxer, mate. Oh, got half of the skill I need these boxers off. I take my ass off to all of them, mate. Yeah. But I can, if I can get in and get punched in the face and I can end up for cancer or any other thrust, like, 
Yeah, I'm all for that, mate. I'm all for any any charity work whatsoever. I'm not asked what it's about. If it's a good cause, I'll do it. I'm scared of three things: spiders, needles, and me ma. And me ma's top of the shop. But uh, yeah, but I'm I, I'm I'm fucked now. Mean and wise. I get nicked one more time. I'm lifed off. I'm gone. No more getting out. Nothing. And like I've lost my little cousins to go and crime. My little, my little cousin Michael Singleton, he was shot yeah, back in the day when it, all the shootings kicked off. I won't go into that because it's a touchy subject. But uh, yeah, he's only 18, mate. Babe was pregnant and all that. And this in Liverpool, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was on uh, the Easby. It was back when uh, Anfield was fighting against Scotty Road, them, them kind of things and that. But, you know, people got theories who shot them and that, and pe people haven't. I, I don't go into all that, means I'm, I'm not interested. You know, a young life was wasted that day. Why? Why you? I'm not interested. It happens. You know, there's nothing I can do that can bring that kid back. And your, your attitude back then was like, just live by the short time. Yeah, the yeah, short. if I had to be in out, I had to go yeah. all out, and I had to be in. And so it was just in me shaving grace in a way, I was. So your whole life, right, uh, do you believe you got to a point where you've changed and how long's that been for? For about five years now? Not a bit longer, you know, mate. See, I'll, I'll tell you the man who, who turned, helped turn my life around was a man called Dave Asperidge, right? He runs, I don't know whether I can say it. See what he was? The car boot, the car boot sale, hmm. near behind him, and he runs that. This man, like, it's me, something like, you think he was a, a posh lad from eating or somewhere like that, and he... He's not, he's from uh, Old Swan and that. There's him and there's Billy. And like, Billy's like my dad. I mean, you couldn't put a photo next to no one and say, wow, that day of life. My sister sat there like that. Lad, that's me dad. And that, uh, and uh, them two, mate, biggest influence, apart from my mum and my family, them two men are the biggest influence on my life. I mean, like, you might think it sometimes, right? Because I am a bit of an hothead and that. And I have got a bit of a temper. But nine times out of ten, when you're working in Bootle, you've got to be like that anyway. You can't say to some, someone I'm Robin, hey, can you put that back, please? Because they'll tell you it's a bounce. So obviously, ground first and then talk later. But without them, I'd have been back in jail within three weeks. So do you think these, these believed in you? Give it a chance, give it an opportunity to... Yeah, yeah, massively. I don't know what they saw, but I, I hope I've repaid them in some small way. Because as I say, being with him now since 2014, and I've had me up since I'm with him. Like, but I, I fell out with them, and they still took me back, mate. I mean, I, like, my, 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 my biggest weapon now is my mouth. You know, I'm more vicious with my mouth than I ever was with my hands. And he... Uh, but you know what, mate, this man just seen something in me. I mean, like, I asked him for a job and I told him every reason why he shouldn't. <laughs> every reason he shouldn't hire me. Listen, I've stabbed people, I've shot people, I've shot. He went, why the fuck are you talking to me all that? I went, well, now no one can tell you anything you don't know. And he went, that's the weirdest interview I've ever had. And he gave me a job the next week, you know. So, you, you know, do you believe, right, that like, a job has changed your life? Because you were talking about at the beginning... Right, you've, you've been nicked for chopping these hands off and what have you, and you've been in and out of custody yeah. for all your life. You know, you've had that fear of going for job interviews because the first thing when you pull up your DBS, you go, whoop, okay, this kid's got some naughty history, we don't need to wire him. Yeah. And you'd believe that, like, that just, ca you carried on committing crime and, and, and having that life, that cycle yeah. of life due to, like, the fear of working and I'm not getting the opportunity. Yeah, nah, not even that means I was told all my life I'm a tug. Yeah. I believed it. Well, you're conditioned, aren't you? I really believed it. I am a pro... I don't like, I know it's a cliche this time, but I am a product of my environment, mate. I mean, like, how I acted and how I reacted when I was younger was down to my environment and the people. Like, don't get me wrong, I had legends like Mr. Bennett and that. I used to teach me manners, respect. You know, listen, open the, open the door for a lady. Oh, put, give you last like models and values that we, we yeah yeah we've like, been. You always need someone to instill them on you, mate, or you're a cheeky little fucker otherwise. Mm -hmm. But like, 
And they say, I always remember Mickey Bur- Bennett grabbed me by me here, and you can't miss these ears, lad. I used to have little ears until I learned Connie Linters. And then, like, the rat birds lagging them everywhere. But, like, he pulled me to one side, and he went, you know what, lad? It's not about being a man. It's how you carry yourself as a man as well. And I didn't know what he meant. And so, like, I used to see him walking in a, in a pub, and everyone would be turning, and you'd, be, you'd find that idiot that used to be asking them out at stop. Just by him being in the boozer. Respect. Yeah, respect. Mm. Respect with a hint of fear. But yeah. mostly respect. So I, I grew up wanting to be respected. But once Baird started showing me a bit of, bit of clever and, and all that, means I was like a dog with two dicks. I was, I was off. And like, you know what, mate? Like, when, when Thomas was going through, when, when Thomas passed away, I was profusely bleeding at the time. Now, not a lot of people know this, mate. Only close family. Uh, suffering with piles. And, like, honest to God, lad, the people have ripped over piles, going, what's going on with your RVs and all that, lad? And, that, and then I got them, mate, and I swear I got a toilet and I'd stand up and I'd, I'd see no white, no porcelain, nothing, just pure red blood. And I thought, how can I go to doctors? Because such law, my law. I'm going to mm. go in, he's going to go, yeah, you're riddled. Yeah. Can't say it, boom. And uh, I, I thought, can't do it. And I started shoveling tramadol and everything down my, my neck. Tramadol, codeine, anything I could get my hands on for the pain. Because my mate, I was like shitting on that. I swear, I had to, when I went to Aussie, when I got the examination, the nurse said to me, oh, lads, I've been a nurse for 30 years, you know, and they're the second ones, the worst ones I've seen. And I was going, whoa. And like, when, when I, like, it's uncomfortable, isn't it, when you get an examined, and they, have you ever had a rectal examination, mate, of the Aussie? Got a finger oh, up the ass, like, <laughs> Yeah, big bit that I got, mate. I'm sure she had a sovereign on, and all that. And like, I've got my legs up and that, and she went deep breath. And I, and like, mate, she put it, and I've got, <laughs> and, she, and she's gone, she, she went, damn massive, I went, please tell me you're on about me balls. Mate, she started laughing, she's still got a finger, I'm going, can you stop fucking laughing there, love? And me, one of my bosses, the one who got me the Aussie, Billy, he sent me a text, and I don't know why at that precise moment, just seeing a good idea to open it up, right, and it's got two baboons, right, one with a big red ass like that, and the other one's like that, and he went, don't worry, lad, I'll be all right. And I just thought, you are a bastard. I'm sorry for my language. How can you do that to me right now? And like, yeah, he made me go to the Aussie, you know, because I never go Aussie. I'm ter- when I say I'm scared and he's I'm terrified, I mean. And he, yeah, he made me go to the Aussie. <laughs> exactly, it was where my dad died. And like, I was born there. So I didn't want to go in. But you know what, mate? They do it great. Like what I was saying about the Aussie before about Anna and that. Like, listen, I don't hold anyone personal. Listen, mate, they, they do a great job and that. They are underpaid. They had paid them everything they wanted. But people make mistakes. And, like, if you don't want to that mistake and then change your mind on it, that's not you that, mate. Like, we do, we're not interested in dough for, uh, for me niche and all that. Because, you know, we're in, the, we're in the fella, the two young kids here, yeah, young adults. Yeah, but she's always my little princess, yeah? And, like... I don't know why, after, after her, she lost Nevea, you know, she walked in ass. And I just put my hand on her belly, you know what I mean? I, d- I don't even know why, that's something like I don't do. And I went, say, you're going to have to swing, you know? She went, oh, Uncle Lily, don't. Because she still calls me Lily. Mm. And, uh, and, and she's gone, don't, don't. I'm going to swear to God, mate. And all that, she came in two weeks later, and she's had swings. Mother. Marley and Tallulah. Wow. Nice, and the two of the whopperest kids you'll ever meet in your life, mate. So Lula's the one with the cojones. Marley's just like his dad's dead, dead shield and all that. We've got our poppy, our poppy. <sighs> that kid's going to be an handful. She's an handful now, I mean, she's going to be a real handful. And then we've got me, uh, me, me the, new, the newest little nephew's our Isaac. His dad's black and that, uh, Mate, you've never seen a boss a pair of big chocolate brown eyes, chocolate button eyes, and he's handsome. And then you've got uh, our Alfie. Our Alfie's a lot like me, but in a good way. Uh, like he's a bit of a chunk, you know what I mean? But the weight's starting to come off him now and all that. I'm always telling you, he's into his wrestling and all that. 
But you know what I was all that means? I wouldn't be here. I really wouldn't, you know. Like my ma. Like, as I say, my dad. My dad was my hero, mate. Like, so how, how, how was your life today then? Yeah, it's hard. I'm not going to bullshit you, mate. It's hard. You know, I look after my mum. Listen, my two sisters have got their own little families, yeah. And listen, they're amazing. They help, they help me. But you know, you know our government, mate? No one better help through the pandemic and they lost me ma twice. Uh, one time she didn't even know who was Bill. For my ma to forget me, for anyone to forget me is hard work anyway, yeah. But for my ma to forget her oldest and that, she was dehydrated that bad. And uh, she didn't know who it was, so when <laughs> she was in Aussie, she phoned me, she going, hey, these cheeky and so and so. They put me on the water all fucking hour once, and I've gone, and she, and th- she's saying this to me sister this. And uh, me ma and she's going, Ma, I don't know whether you know this, yeah. You're sitting nearly 70. You're an hour on spent. Fuck off. I hung up on her. Um, but while she was in there, mate, I made downstairs into the living room, in, into the into the bedroom. Yeah. Carried it down. Because she struggles getting up down the stairs. And, uh, so you look after your mum these days? Yeah, mate. So God, I've got to have a nice Like, she looks after me. It's an honour. It's on, listen, I'm not a carer, mate. <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination, I'm a protector. Like, but she never moaned when she got long with me. I want long. And it's hard, mate. I've got no help whatsoever. I'm trying to get carers. Yeah, I heard your mum speaking to you before, saying, make sure you look after my boy. So <laughs> You know what, mate? So it's lovely to hear that. She's good. She, like, I showed her a few, a few of your things, and I. And uh, she's going out. He's a lovely lad, him. <laughs> lovely lad. Why are all your mates red heads, by the way? Mm. And all that. I mean, you can't say stuff like that, you know. I'll say what the fuck I'm not. <laughs> and all that. She meant he sounds a lovely lad. And I, I like, I told her a bit of like your, your back half from what I, you know, what I've yeah. learned. Now. And she went, you make sure to tell, <laughs> you make sure to tell him how proud we are of you. That's lovely, though. And like, you know, mate, it means a lot, you know, because my man's I used to say, they, I'm getting a bit emotional, like, my man's I used to say, they were proud to me, right, lad? And I never gave them nothing. I used to think, you're just biased. You're just biased. And all that. And, eh, uh, you know what, mate, if one kid can take anything from this, yeah. And that's what I'm coming to now, Leon, yeah. uh, right? What would you, right, so, because we've come to the end now, right, so what would you say? Right, and I've always said there's a pale of wisdom. It's, what would you say to a young Leon Seisman coming through the door of life now? If you had the opportunity to see yourself back then on reflection and hindsight and go, right, I've got to speak to this kid, what would you say? What, what advice would you give yourself? Get out. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't. Nah, you know what, mate? Don't try and be the hero. Don't try and be, because like everyone's your mate and shit. Nah. But everyone's your mate until like you're in a cell and your ma's sending you five pounds a week. You know, all these dickheads that like used to give me toe and that and used to bail me out. and that. Yeah, you don't see none of them, mate, right? And plus, you know, one little mistake that you can make when you're early. And listen, I used to buzz off our fellas that used to say this to me, and used to go, whatever, yeah, fuck off. And that. They're so right, mate. Listen to you know, listen to the older people, mate, because they're not saying it just because they don't want it. They want an easy life and that. They're doing it because they probably have really got your best interest at heart. And if they're taking the time to give you advice, you don't have to take advice off anyone. Yeah. You, I, I'll take so much from each person I meet that will benefit me. I'm sure that's what advice is about, and it take what yeah. benefits you to try and evolve it. That's what I'm, I'd say. Listen. The Lord, and that's there for a person. I'll probably get called snared. Well, me, myself, as I said, I probably fucking. But I've had my life for a young yeah. kid. Go down the right channels, mate. Go to, you know. There used to be a thing called straightness. I don't know, it should be in a museum, that word now, yeah. shouldn't it? Yeah. Fucking uh, Now it's all. That. Why? I, I, I'll respect any man. He'll go out in the cobbles or in a ring. In a ring, because you can walk in a gym, couldn't you? And I'm sure if you walked in a gym and went like that, me and him have got beefy, we want to sort it. Under controlled environment, yeah, they probably have it. Yeah. I remember the Sunday used to do it back in the day, you know. And like, 
listen to people. I mean, I'm like, I, as I said, there's probably so much more I could go on. Like, and you know what? You've said it. You've said yeah, it. You've said it the way it should be. Like, you know, I, I've got so many people. Like when I had, when I thought they had the concert, it turns out not to be. I was with a girl, and you know what? She she was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me, and I pushed her away. And Paddy Pimley is my fucking absolute hero for what mm. he said that night. If you're a man, so, so, you know, all this stigma shit about, oh, if I say that, they're going to think I'm stoke on all of it. So fucking what, man? I'd sooner have a mate on my shoulder crying yeah. than like going to the funeral. Exactly. So that man, you know, I've heard all kinds of scousers on social media and all that. Nine out of ten of them have blown it out their ass. You're one of the real ones, you. That's why I, that's why I got in touch with you because, like, I thought if anyone, you're the fairest one I've seen out of all of them. I mean, half of them are doing that from podcast walls or whatever. Now you've always seen like you're looking for that next little step to benefit you and benefit anyone else that you can help. And I love that about you, mate. And like as I said, I'm not here to blow smoke up people's asses, but. If they need telling me, you've got to tell them, and you carry on doing what you're doing with these platforms, and because you you may not see the fucking the instant gratification thing what you're doing, me. Trust me, mate, you're helping so many of us. Thank you. Because like with your recovery from and um, with your recovery from the cancer, I watched all that. I, I you had me shoving like a bitch the other night, and I had so much different level of respect for you then, mate. Because I watched the film years ago, so. It, it was what it was, and to come back t to where you are at a level now, I mean, you're a shining light for someone like me. That like, I hope one day I can hit them nights. Where you from? I mean, that brother, because you're on, you're a proper scout, mate. Well, thanks, thanks yeah. for coming on. I appreciate it, mate. And I just don't want a little kid, or it doesn't matter if it's a person or older, whatever. Guess the message. Don't take anything out of it. I may mean, shine like I, I'm glorifying. I'm so not, you know. So no, I'm just giving. You're you just a, selling your story. Yeah, it is how it is, mate. The bulldog's not just for Christmas. It's yeah. for <laughs> I'm thankful with that. You know what I mean, mate. Nice but one. Take care, Leon. Sit down.